Hello, Flame community. This is Jeff Kyle with the Flame Learning Channel. If you're a Mac user who's been wishing for the same efficient background rendering your Linux friends have been enjoying, then get ready because new to the Flame 2025.2 update is background reactor compatibility on Mac OS. In this video, we'll be covering what the background reactor is, where to find it, and how to use it in your next project. Flame's background reactor allows us to take rendering tasks that would otherwise take place in the foreground and process them in the background, giving us the efficiency to continue working without waiting for a progress bar to finish. Linux users with a dual GPU configuration are able to dedicate their second GPU to background reactor without worrying about any memory allocation, so long as the GPUs are the same make and model. If you have a single GPU configuration, since it's not a burn render farm and it's using the same machine to work and to render in the background, a certain amount of CPU and GPU memory does need to be allocated to background reactor. We'll go over the specifics of how to set this up at the end of the video. We're able to use background reactor anywhere we would otherwise use foreground rendering. In conform, in timeline, batch effects, the effects environment, and in batch. If we take a look at the render button here in the timeline, when we select the drop down button here, we can choose to switch the rendering from foreground to background reactor. Choosing this initiates the background reactor engine, and at that point, the memory we've chosen to allocate to background reactor will be allocated to give us the ability to render in the background. Now, when I select a segment with timeline effects in the timeline here and hit my render button, instead of getting a dialog box indicating my render's progress, the task is rendered in the background. This is indicated by a message in the console at the bottom left of the screen, as well as a dotted line in the render indication area of my segment here until the render completes when it turns into a darker line indicating my segment is rendered. This type of rendering mimics the foreground rendering behavior. We select a clip, we select render, and the clip renders. But there's one other feature called background reactor auto which behaves a little differently. You can find Background Reactor Auto in the same render dropdown, just under the Background Reactor option. When we select it, we see our render button turns blue, indicating that automatic mode is active. The idea here is that Flame will render segments that have both had work done to them and that we have seen. Flame knows to render these segments after a few criteria are met. First, we do something to a segment. In my case, I'm conforming some footage to an offline reference picture, so I'll cycle to the difference compare mode with the F15 keyboard shortcut and adjust the resize so it matches. Second, we move the positioner off the segment with the applied timeline effects. And third, we click off of the segment in question. This can either be explicitly clicking off of the clip and clicking onto nothing, or clicking onto another clip. I'll select the second segment here, do the same operation, match it to the reference, and then move on to the next clip. Before we click off, Flame doesn't know that we're done working, so rightfully so, it doesn't initiate the render. But once we click off of the segment, the rendering initiates and we're free to keep working. If we apply timeline effects to multiple segments at once, we don't have to explicitly select the segments, but we do have to explicitly review them and move on before the background rendering takes place. Some less demanding projects might not require this level of efficiency, but with effects that require a significant render time, like the machine learning time warp for example, it can be incredibly useful to send that render to the background and keep working. Background rendering in conform is quite similar to how it works in the timeline, but let's take a look at how this works in the effects environment. To start, Keep in mind that the render settings are set on a per environment basis, meaning that while we did set the timeline to background reactor auto, that's not yet the case here in the effects environment. So I'll just head over to the dropdown here and select background reactor auto. After that, the process is quite similar. I'll just set a quick grade on this shot, move on to the next shot, and we can see the shot I just left is sent to background reactor and rendered right away. Batch is the one environment that's just a bit different from the others, in that it doesn't have automatic background rendering. The idea here is that the batch environment is better suited for explicit rendering rather than automatic rendering. With that in mind, we access the background reactor through the same way we saw before. We head to the render button, click the drop down, and select background reactor. Now, rendering this batch will send that render task to the background reactor, and we're free to continue on to the next shot. 
an incredible time saver, especially for when we're jumping from shot to shot. If we want background reactor to be our default render setting across the board, we can do so in the preferences under the user category, then general, and this default rendering options section where we can switch between foreground and background reactor. Additionally, under background tasks, we can see that by default, protect playback is on, which pauses any background reactor tasks when we're playing media, but it can be switched off if we want to prioritize render speed. And finally, we have the option of adjusting the memory management of both flame and background reactor to better suit our specific needs. The default settings prioritize flame's performance, which might leave background reactor with fewer resources than it needs to run efficiently. If you're finding you want to allocate less memory to flame and more to background reactor, here's how. First, we can open up the flame setup application, and under general, we can adjust the memory consumption target from automatic to 45% and the graphics memory consumption target from automatic to 55%. We can hit apply at the bottom right, and that's it for Flame. For background reactor, we do have to adjust its configuration file located in opt, autodesk, background reactor, and then the installed version, CFG, and its init.cfg. You may have to adjust the permissions of this file before you're able to modify it, but once we're inside, we're looking for the same fields we just adjusted in the Flame setup, but this time it's for background reactor. First, we'll remove the hash symbols to indicate that we are changing the default values, and set the memory consumption target to 45%, and the graphics memory consumption target to 35%. We can save this file, and that's it. The next time we run Flame, we're able to take advantage of the rebalanced memory allocation, ensuring background reactor performs more efficiently while keeping our creative work uninterrupted. If you like these videos and you're finding them helpful, please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel and click the bell to stay notified about new content. Feel free to comment any questions or suggestions below. Until next time, thanks a bunch for watching.